Scientifically. Officially. All right. All right. All right, cohorts 58 and 59. See, I was thinking six projects seems like uh, a lot of projects. I didn't realize that we had the cohorts together, but that's fantastic. A big happy family. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So a little bit about four geeks. We're now a massive a uh, massive school. We have 10 locations in seven countries, including the USA, Venezuela, Spain, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Mexico, Argentina, Uruguay, and Portugal. We have over 4,500 graduates. 85% of our graduates go on to find a job in 90 days. We have a ton of partnerships, and we're here to make sure you succeed. All right, so <laughs> I remember this one from last time. So if, if you look, if you look three lines down, there's a really, really fun line that I'm going to try to read to you. Okay, so here we go. Premios Excelencia Educativa Best Coding Bootcamp 2023. Can I can I get a round of applause for that, please? Because that was that was not that was not easy. We receive an average of four point. <laughs> Appreciate it, Brody and Scott. Uh, on average, we get 4.9 on reviews. People love us. If you see here, the beautiful Florida Department of Education that exists in my nightmares upon reflection. It's all good now, though. Okay. All right. So what's our track record? Okay. So over 22%. Oh, excuse me. I, I read that inc in, incorrectly. The average percent salary increase after completing the program is 22%. Okay. 86%, average percentage of students that get hired after completing a core, you heard me speak about that in the previous slide. We want to reduce the rate of unemployment, providing accessibility and increasing the amount of digital talent available. Okay. So what do we offer here? How are we effective? What steps do we take to ensure our students succeed? Well, one of those things we do is GeekPal where we give you unlimited access to mentorship forever. So what this looks like is we have a catalog, or I should say um, many mentors that are available for you to meet with at any time. I'm sure many of the groups here today actually scheduled mentorship sessions when they were building their product. I know I did when I was setting up my final project. It's unbelievably useful because a YouTube video that you search up, right, might be imprecise. It may not be able to solve exactly the problem you're dealing with. But with one-on-one -on -one mentorship, you can have somebody walk through a problem with you step by step and solve specifically your ale. Okay. So it, it's about supporting you through your coding journey and continuing career as a developer. Bear in mind, when you guys graduate, you can still schedule mentorship sessions. This really is for life. And I wish, I wish more people actually leverage this. I, I see very few people leveraging mentorship sessions the way they should. This really is, is what makes this boot camp stand out, in my opinion, and it's invaluable. Okay. Okay, what else do we do? Right? Because learning the technical skills, that is the most important point. I, I don't think anybody would dispute that. But we obviously all here are career motivated, right? We, we're learning a skill so that we can advance our careers. So this is where Geek Force comes in. We understand that this, this boot camp really should be thought of in two steps, learning the technical skills and then actually making it matter, right? Getting a job, doing those technical things. So here we have Valentina Ancieta. She's head of career support here in uh, the USA. And yeah, so our focus is helping you land that first job because that's gonna be the hardest job seeking process you will ever undergo in your career. Right, in your life, frankly, is once you're changing careers, you're learning a new skill, you frankly don't have a lot of evidence that you're good at the thing you're trying to get a job at. You have to create projects. You have to advertise yourself in an intelligent way to break through that barrier. And th that's what we do. We, we help you craft that, cr craft that resume so that you can get that job. 
<laughs> okay, I'm going to read it fast. You ready? No, I'm kidding. Okay. Uh, so we have over 400 companies that have hired our students. I'm sure let's just pick out the ones that are fun, right? So everybody was looking at Benjamin Douglas, I'm sure, right? It was everybody, you know? Uh, okay, so, so I'm hearing some mutterings. People were talking about Uber, Facebook, Microsoft. I don't know how many of you guys are keeping up with what's going on right now at Microsoft, but Satya Nadella is probably one of the coolest CEOs to exist. So maybe you want to go work at Microsoft. Maybe you want to go, <laughs> let's see, maybe you want to go work at Synergy Business Consulting, right? I don't know. Yeah, well, whatever your deal is, you know, you pursue what you love. Oh, the point is, is that we have a lot of resources here. We have a lot of partnerships and the likelihood that you are regarded favorably is higher here at four geeks because these companies have hired from us before and they know that our students are of high quality okay now for our partners these are people that we work hand in glove with and uh <laughs> we work with like white on rice I don't, I don't know if i'm using that expression properly probably not but whatever we're i'm in the arena trying things shout out to moth uh, but yeah, so we have the skills fund, we have Miami Dade college and, uh, and yeah, just echoing the, the previous slide is we have, uh, we can set you on the right path. Okay. Now we have a guest speaker coming in, in a bit. He'll be here around six fifteen, So we have about four minutes remaining. So <laughs> let's see, how should I fill in this time? Should I, should I do a, should I do a bit little, little stand up? All right. So Tamante Leary, this guy is a monster, right? He's a content developer at Microsoft. He's a co-founder at Blacks at Microsoft. Um, he's a lead at BAM. I guess that's Blacks at Mac Microsoft, Miami, South Florida. He's a founder. He's, uh, he's a founder at the ByteCon Foundation, Onyx. Oh, man, this is a long list. This guy does a lot. Uh, we got Black Men Talk Tech, CEO, entrepreneur, mentor, and DEIA advocate. All right. Heck of a resume. All right. So for tonight's presentations, we have Team Up Nexus, very clever name, with Scott, Derek, and Alberto. We have Prep Pal with, ooh, I'm going to try, Rochelle, Chazne, and Carlos. Oh, okay, okay. This one's going to be tricky for me. Then we have trabajador.com. I was close, right? That's I think that's a uh, job in, in Spanish with Brody, Matthew, and Jose. We have art seekers with Erica, Jose, Wesley, and Aleska. We have Burger Bite, which I, I feel already really negatively towards this group because I'm very hungry right now and this is not helping. We have Casey, Hugh, and Nathan, and we have Flight Scheduler with Andrew, Jethro, and Nicholas. I gotta say, these are some of the best names I've ever read. Like, the first one's wrong, that was my bad. okay. Oh, so last second modification. Instead of Team Up Nexus, we have say it one more time. Serenity Scribe, and I had, I knew that one already. I was wondering where you guys are at. But yeah, fantastic. I actually already use that product, don't I? Yeah, I do. He, he just said I did. All right, fantastic. Okay. Sure, sure. All right, Shane and uh, Valerie, if you if you guys would like to speak a little bit about your experience here uh, with your with your class and, and talk a bit about that as we uh, as we kind of um, filibuster. <laughs> well, that's all right. Um, yeah. No, this is a. Uh, uh, we ended up picking up uh, PT58 for the final project cycle um, due to uh, the, just uh, some uh, unforeseeable, uh, unforeseeable circumstances, um, and it was it was a great experience. Honestly, um, both the students from PT58 and 59 have been great. Um, yeah, I, I I've had a really good time with all of you. Uh, I'm actually going to kick it over to Valerie. Sorry to put you on the spot. Um, quickly. Uh, um, yeah. 100% on the spot. Have <laughs> um, oh, I'm normally really good at saying many 
two things or too much things and now i'm on the spot i have no idea what to say um it's been a great cohort we've all had a a lot of fun. I definitely spent more time, you know, with the original 66 uh, cohort, more than 68, but I've had a great time meeting everyone from 68 as well. I mean, everyone's done a great job and all these projects have turned out very impressive um, during this time. I think Alyssa wants to say something. Yeah, I'll say. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Hi. Um, so we have a really special thing that we want to announce tonight um, through our partnership with Microsoft, and we have a speaker who you saw on the previous slide, Tamonte, who is coming from Microsoft, um, and he actually has me here on WhatsApp, and he's uh, running a few minutes late, but he is uh, going to be joining within the next five minutes. So uh, we're just buying some time here and and waiting for him, but. Um, I thought during this time I could share some special news about some things that 4Geeks has been working on um, and ways that we're expanding our presence in, in even more places and things that will be beneficial for you guys. Um, so the first piece of news I'd like to share is that we've opened two new physical locations. So previously we had three physical locations in Florida. We're here in Miami, we have an Orlando office, and we have our Boca Raton office. We've now opened physical locations in both Atlanta, Georgia, and in Houston, Texas. So if you guys are ever visiting those types of cities, which are also tech hubs, and there's a lot of tech events going on there, uh, you guys will have the opportunity to you know, visit 4Geeks office. Uh, we're building partnerships with companies there that can potentially hire our grads, um, working with grant money in those places to help more students take the program. So just ways that we're, that we're expanding there. Another cool piece of news is that we were featured in Forbes recently for both the top five online full stack boot camps and the top five online data science boot camps. Um, so I know obviously you guys just took the full stack program, but we do also offer the data science program. I'm actually currently taking the data science program, uh, missing my class right now to host this geek talk, but that's okay. Um, but it's, it's really cool. Um, it's a really cool program. You guys learn how to um, use data to make predictions, which you know is really valuable to companies, uh, can help them minimize investment, increase ROI. Um, so yeah, just, just wanted to say that, of course, being featured in Forbes is just like a really cool achievement. Um, some other things we're working on, I know there's like six students, I believe, tonight that are graduating through the Miami Tech Talent Coalition. So the Miami Tech Talent Coalition is an organization here in Miami that they received a federal grant that helps to continue to make Miami a tech hub. So they're focusing on two main areas. One of those areas is skilling slash upskilling, which is basically training. So there's six students here tonight that are that are graduating that were part of the Miami Tech Talent Coalition. Um, they provide scholarships, access to education, wraparound services, try to support you guys through your journey. And then the other side that they're focusing on is relationships with both uh, businesses, both small businesses and big businesses. If you guys know of a company here in Miami called Kaseya, it's a huge tech company. Um, we actually did an info session at their headquarters in Brickell about, I don't know, it was about two months ago. I know Omar was there. He's, he's here on campus right now. Um, but they are hiring like 200 plus developers throughout 2024. So we're working with them. Um, and they're also meeting with small businesses to uh, do what they say is uh, to close the gap. So they want to make sure that what the training providers are offering fits with what the hiring companies are looking for. So if we're not teaching you the right thing, you know, we're constantly updating our syllabus and actualizing the curriculum to make sure we're teaching you what those companies are looking for. So um, that that or organization, the Miami Tech Talent Coalition, also known as Miami Tech Works, the grant is called Good Jobs Challenge. So they have like, you know, three names, three faces. Um, I don't know if they're here in the meeting. They, they might have come to, to watch you guys. They're traveling to a a meeting in Washington, I think it's in Washington, D.C. right now, um, which is kind of like a board meeting for the, the federal grant organization. But um, they plan to renew the contract. They're going to be doing it another year. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities, uh, especially for the MTC students who are graduating tonight. Not only do you have the four geeks career services, but you're also going to have all those relationships that MTC is building and, and access to them and their network. Um, the other really big announcement I want to make is about <laughs> Microsoft, but um let me see if he's coming he is coming um he's just running a few minutes late 
Is there anybody else that maybe wants to to give a few words about their experience in the cohort or just uh, share something while we wait for Tamante to join? Any students want to? Yes, Scott, please. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so I just wanted to say that um, I'm really appreciating um, Four Geeks approach to learning things quickly. Um, there were times in the middle and towards the end of the, the cohort where you just felt like your brain couldn't take anymore and stuff, but the actual hands on of like doing it and doing the project. Um, I've really got to a point where I can float through the code and know where to go. And, and, you know, if I want to change this, I can change that. And I think the hands-on approach, um, really helped, um, with that versus, you know, kind of longer, long-term more book type of stuff. Um, so I just wanted to give four geeks, um, props for that and, uh, give credit where credit's due. That's my thought. Scott, I really appreciate that. And we're really happy to have you in this cohort. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else want to give a few words? Well, he should be joining, he said, in about two minutes. So I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> he's a busy man, as you can see. All the, he, he, he's like a super cool guy. First of all, he has four kids. So he's a busy man with his four kids, you know. But he, he works at Microsoft. He's a content developer at Microsoft. Um, he has a foundation called ByteCon, which if you guys have been to any of our on-campus events that we do with ByteCon, we've done um, the Metaverse event. We've done uh, how to use ChatGPT like in your daily work life. We've done, uh, do introverts make good leaders? What other ones have we done? Uh, we did Adrian Cole's workshop. What was his on? It was on building a product. So okay. Product oh, yeah. It was like building your first product as an video. entrepreneur. Yeah, there's a video up on our YouTube channel. Like, anybody's curious to, to check it out later. But, um, yeah. So, to talk to him about. so we do recurring events with them. But basically what they do is, is helping minorities of any sort. So you can be from the BIPOC community. You could be a woman. You could be, I mean, everybody's a minority, right? So <laughs> any way that we can, that they can help you. So they provide mentorship, they provide events, they provide co-working spaces, um, networking opportunities. So they have um, a goal of getting, I believe it's 5 million people from the BIPOC community into tech over the next five years. So uh, Four Geeks is contributing to their mission and, and we partner with them for scholarships and, and for a lot of different things. So um, Tamante, since he works at Microsoft, um, they are doing something really interesting that I don't want to give too much information about because I want him to announce it, um, that we are partnering with them for, um, and he's going to be joining in the next two minutes or so to tell you guys about it, uh, and to let you guys, you know, take advantage of this partnership we have with Microsoft. I'm trying not to give away too much information. I'm like at the point where I almost want to, want to say, oh, I think he's, he's trying to join. He's in the waiting room. Ah, here he is. <laughs> okay. He's here. <laughs> Thank you, Tamante. <laughs> All right. First of all, I'm excited to be here. Sorry, I'm a little late. Um, <clears throat> I want to start by congratulating you um, all on graduating and completing your boot camp at Four Geeks Academy. It's that's no easy feat. And off to the, the races you are, so to speak, when it comes to taking your, your careers to the next level. Um, we're always hiring at Microsoft. So um, <clears throat> with the information that I'm about to share, um, th this is something that will help you not only get potentially a, a role at Microsoft or, you know, let's at least get on our radar, but just in general, um, when it comes to being able to kind of showcase what you um, would, would learn um, as a result of all the skills you would gain over the next eight weeks. So I'll share a little more. And then of course, 
in addition to the skills that you've gained in the boot camp. <clears throat> so um, the Microsoft Innovation Challenge is a challenge that we, um, my foundation, BiteCon, is uh, one of the organizations um, who has been tapped to engage learners for this challenge. And we're, we have a goal as a company, Microsoft, we want to engage a thousand learners to around, um, or I should say, to upskill them on our Azure um, developer um, credentials. Um, out of the 1,000 learners that we're, that it, out, out of that goal of 1,000, we're trying to get 400 um, learners credentialed. And this is where I really believe in the four geek students um, were not only this, but the hackathon I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, we're trying to get 400 learners credentialed on either our AZ204 um, credential, our, I should say, our Microsoft AZ204 credential, our Microsoft AI102 credential, or um, <clears throat> the Microsoft DP203 credential. Um, those three essentially are <clears throat> are are our um, Azure uh, our Azure data our Azure data engineer um, certification our Azure developer certification and um, our Azure AI engineer certification so Azure AI engineer Azure data engineer and Azure um, developer um, certifications. So those are the three um, credentials that we're skilling learners on, skilling up learners on. Um, we already, so where we're at now is, um, give me one second. Um, we, we have, um, so let me actually, let me tell you a little bit more about the challenge. So the first love, the first phase of the challenge is going to be, is going to consist of training um, the learners on, um, uh, on their learning, I should say, going to consist of the learners being on a learning challenge for their desired credential um, for the next eight weeks, um, approximately. So shorter than, you know, than a boot camp, and also free. Um, over those eight weeks, um, it will be a combination of, a, the challenge will be a combination of asynchronous learning on, on the learner's part and instructor-led weekly webinars uh, along with instructor office hours each week for the next eight, eight weeks um, <clears throat> on the Microsoft side. And there will also be a virtual lab component as well. And so that, that's also why there will be office hours to address you know, questions when it comes to the, the virtual lab component of this challenge. Um, but the goal is uh, by the end of the eight weeks, we want um, is to, to, to reach as, as close to that goal as possible of getting 400 learners credentialed. So thereby you all, because I, have, I, have, I believe in y'all, um, will be invited to participate in, in our invite only Microsoft Hackathon in June. And then this is this is where I want to this is where I really want y'all to show up. That hackathon has a first place prize. I, I believe there's we're gonna have teams of five, and you can have a coach or like a captain or advisor if you want. Um that hackathon has a first place prize of ten thousand dollars, it has two second place prizes of five thousand dollars, and it has um two third third place three third place um twenty five hundred dollar prizes and so that's money up for grabs um not only do i believe in you all being able to complete the challenge get the credential i believe in you all being able to show up and you know at our microsoft hackathon as well um participants will get um you know, we'll get recognized, we'll get some exposure from our company when it comes to social media, maybe video um, <clears throat> interviews and such, radio interviews. Um, this is the time to really take advantage of, you know, our learnings are always free, 
but we will be providing vouchers, exam vouchers. Usually it costs to take these certification exams, as you all well know. We're going to be providing the learners the vouchers for these certifications on Microsoft. Um, normally it's about $150 to $200, um, depending on the certification for that cost. These certifications are all intermediate level certifications. So you students are the perfect and alumni and really the whole four geeks community and ecosystem, in my opinion, are the perfect students to be able to really handle the challenge and make a dent. Um, uh, we are looking, you know, it, this challenge is for anyone, but we're definitely looking to um, reach underrepresented um, communities when it comes to women, Hispanics, Blacks, Latinos. Um, and so we have a very diverse, obviously a very diverse ecosystem with four geeks there. Um, and we definitely want to leverage that as well. Um, so where we are now, we are ready for you all to register with BikeCon Foundation on our site, uh, bikecon.org. Uh, Alyssa can, um, can put it in the chat because I'm, or maybe I can put it in the chat. Uh, or Alyssa, if you don't mind, but that's bike-con.org. Uh, and if you go under um, the events tab, you'll see the Microsoft BikeCon Innovation Challenge where you can register with, uh, with us. Uh, we have just a form, it's very quick and simple. So we know that you're, um, you're doing the challenge with BikeCon. And then from there, we have the, uh, the different links uh, for you to choose the challenge that you want from the three credential, three certification paths that I just told you. Um, I also, if you're, if you're ready to kind of like anyone who's interested in this AZ204, uh, if you go to our LinkedIn post today, I already posted the trainer for that one. He's going to have his first, um, uh, live webinar actually, uh, on Tuesday. Um, that won't be the first class though for the training that'll be the following tuesday but that'll be more for q a and folks to kind of learn more about that certification that credential for the az204 um and also you know if you do do that when he'll be your trainer awesome guy's name's bobby um and if if and you know there's also some information about bobby as well in that post that we just posted on our linkedin company um post um where not only you can enroll uh i should say get started on that challenge for az204 um and i would encourage you all to go ahead sign up i mean sign up now um go ahead and take advantage of our um all of our learning resources on the microsoft learn uh that are going to be used for uh for this challenge um Connect with Bobby Russell. If you're going to do the AZ204, go ahead and connect with them on LinkedIn. You know, let them know that you're going to be, you know, at the at the at his Q and A webinar next week. Let them know you're going to be with him for the next eight weeks uh, for his online webinars. If you want to do the AZ204, go ahead and get start started. You know, reviewing the material so you have, you know, an idea of what is expected, um, and and so you can get a jump start and get ahead. I know y'all like man. Like, wow, Tamante, you're asking us to do this and we just graduated. <laughs> um, but hopefully this is something that you'll be, it, it's a challenge. Y'all obviously hopefully embrace challenge and it's something that should be fun <clears throat> that y'all can do and do together and, and also upskill and really be able to showcase, showcase your Azure, uh, develop your Azure dev um, skills, right? Um, in addition to your bootcamp skills when you complete the challenge. If y'all give me one second, please give me one second. Hey guys, so I know the audio was a little bit iffy there, so I just kind of want to provide a high level overview of everything that he said. So Microsoft is hosting what's called the Innovation Challenge 2024, and their goal is to upskill 1000 people in tech. So take you from where you are now and get you to an even higher level through Microsoft certifications. So usually these certifications are paid certifications and there's also a cost to take the exam. So you can do the course self-paced online, but then when you take the exam to get certified, there's a cost for the exam too. So 
through this innovation challenge, they're not charging for the curriculum and they're not charging for the exam. So it's completely free for you guys to do. So it's about six to eight weeks of instruction. They have live workshops that you can join where you can ask Microsoft mentors questions. He mentioned that one of the certifications has a workshop this upcoming Tuesday, but the course is uh, self-paced in the sense that you kind of do the coursework on your own and then you come to the workshops. There'll be mentors that you can connect with. I know he dropped a LinkedIn in the chat. So kind of similar to how like the pre-work worked at 4Geeks where you were going through the pre-work on your own, but you schedule with mentors when you need. Um, there's three different certifications you can choose from. You can do one, you can do two, or you can do all three. But if you complete at least one of them, you'll be invited to the hackathon, which I think he said is in May. Um, I wrote it down. Yes, it's in yeah, May. Yeah, I'm very, sorry. So the hackathon starts on May 29th. Um, our goal is to have you all credential prior to the hackathon. It's, it starts at on May 29th and it ends on June 10th. I didn't know my, can y'all hear me? I didn't know my audio was coming in. Yes. Bad. Okay. Um, the hackathon is from May 29th to June 10th. So we want to try to get everyone credential prior to the hackathon because that's when you're really going to be able to showcase your skills there. And, and it'll be, you know, for hopefully for y'all to win some prize money. Um, and I guess since some of what I said, it was choppy. If y'all have any questions, um, feel free to ask any questions now. I just kind of get tried to give a brief summary of everything that you said in case there was any pieces missing. So in the hackathon, you can compete for prizes that range from twenty five hundred to ten thousand um, dollars. And then you'll also have the chance there to connect with people who work at Microsoft, with other coaches, um, Microsoft partners and and have that exposure to the Microsoft community. And like Tamante said, they're, they are always hiring there. Um, we're also working with some co-working spaces. We're offering Four Geeks Academy as a co-working space. So if you guys want to come here and work on projects together, we're going to be offering this space. Um, and Tamante, did, did you guys have a co-working space too that you mentioned? Yeah, J, JT Workspace in Hollywood. For those of y'all that are closer to Broward, uh, my partner's um, space, we're going to be offering as well for um, those that want to, you know, especially for the hackathon, right? If y'all want to hack away together in any of our works, in, you know, the workspace or just learn together as a part of the learning challenge, you know, in a group or I don't know, do, you know, get together and do one of the online webinars. Um, then all of that is, is entirely doable when it comes to our workspace and Hollywood JT workspace. Um, I'll get a list of the address for that. And then of course, um, we also, um, have, uh, uh, PS social as well in Wynwood. Um, is like a kind of like a I don't want to say it's a co-working space, but it can be used as well for you to congregate, learn, um, you know, work on the challenge or the hackathon as well. Any aspects of it, if you know, if that applies to anyone. So, yeah. And I, I would ask you all to share with your friends, your you know, uh, fellow alumni, you know, the prior cohorts, the future cohorts uh, that you may be connected to especially the alumni, um, the international students, um, the students that aren't connected to, like that aren't local. Um, and then of course, everybody, everybody local as well. Uh, yes, I, I can't see your name, but uh, I see your hand, Scott, yep. Um, so the hackathon is a, in the person uh, only thing. It's virtual. Okay. It's a virtual hackathon all run by Microsoft. It's invite it's awesome. invite only and only those who are credentialed and one of the who who uh, have one of the certification credentials will be invited to participate in the hackathon. Okay. Thank you. Points that I just wanted to emphasize. So the first point which was Scott's question was, can I do it remotely? So if you're not here in Miami, you can still do it. Um, our co-working spaces are in Miami and Broward here in South Florida. So obviously you wouldn't, you know, go in person to a co-working space to work on it. But if you want to do it 100% from home, it can be done 100% from home. And the other point that I wanted to make clear is like, we have a goal of upscaling as many people as we can. So it's not like you have to apply and hope you get a space. You can do it. Your friend who's interested in getting into tech can do it. Um, I Isaiah here can do it. Like you guys all have this ticket to do it. So 
it's a free training from Microsoft. You're going to get a Microsoft credential, a Microsoft badge. If you complete the credential, you're going to be invited to a Microsoft hackathon. You're going to have the chance to interact and network with people who work at Microsoft. So it's like an open door free ride for you guys. So it's not like you have to go through an application process something like we're giving you the opportunity I, right now so I, I don't i don't i don't think isaiah could do it but no, i'm just <laughs> but totally joking isaiah uh but i do want to say uh to um level set expectations and in, in, in full transparency and i did mention but it, it i want to i want to make sure that you all understand we have uh, beginner level certifications at Microsoft. We have intermediate level certifications at Microsoft and we have advanced level certifications at Microsoft. This is not a beginner level certification. This is an intermediate level certification, which means we, we are someone who, uh, as Alyssa said, is just like interested in tech and wants to get in tech. This challenge isn't, isn't best suited for them. Um, someone who has uh, some technical savvy, especially uh, students like yourselves who, you know, have completed a boot camp. This is very much suited for, for learners like yourselves to succeed and, and to, to uh, have an impact and do well. Um, yes, anyone can participate, but to take someone who's never opened a computer before and say, you want to participate in the Microsoft Innovation Challenge and, you know, earn your Azure, you know, developer's credential is not realistic. Um, so I just want to throw that out there. Um, I don't know if there's any questions, but that's also so you all know when you communicate about this, so you're not, you know, getting your little brother or your your, your cousin or your even your mother because anyone can do this right we're even encouraging microsoft but you're not getting the wrong people excited right you want to get the right people excited thank you tamante we're going to go ahead and get started with presentations oh okay all right ahead, thank you all for your, thank you all for your time do y'all have all the information you need to get registered and everything to, yeah, go ahead, Scott. Yeah, um, so is is there going to be links that tell us all about it um, that we can do our homework there, or oh, should yeah, we yeah. ask those questions now? We're gonna we're gonna put yeah, all nope. the necessary links in the Slack channel, so you guys will have full okay. access to everything you'll need. Awesome, thank you. You Ian. can go to our link. You yeah, no problem. You can also go to our LinkedIn. I don't know if you're on LinkedIn, but you can go to our LinkedIn page as well and get uh, some information there. We'll have more on our social media also. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to be able to stick around for the presentations, uh, unfortunately, but I know y'all are going to knock it out of the park. And I, I do look forward um, to seeing everyone get registered for the Microsoft Innovation Challenge um, and, and kill it when it comes to the hackathon component as well. Thank y'all, congratulations. Uh, happy Friday, Have a, enjoy y'all's weekend party. Party with the Spring Breakers this weekend and celebrate. <laughs> Indeed, thank you, Tomato. All, All right, right. Bye -bye. So, so the way the format's gonna work from here on out is we're gonna have a group present we're going to open it up to questions for that group, and then we're going to go to the next group, and we're going to repeat that process. So, so for our first presentation, we're going to do Serenity Scribe. Here you go. Okay, can you guys hear me all right? Yes. Perfect. All right, so we are Serenity Scribe. Um, the goal of our, our idea was to create a minimalistic safe space where you could pen your thoughts, record your mood, um, and have an impact on your emotional well-being as well as self-care. <clears throat> Okay. 
Um, I'm going to introduce you to our team. I'm Albert. I'm Scott. And I'm Derek. Um, we went through a lot getting this project together from no coding experience. Um, it was definitely a roller coaster. Um, some of our biggest issues were the tiniest little problem, <laughs> just the wrong indentation somewhere. Um, but we managed to pull it together and uh, I couldn't have asked for a better team. Okay. The reason why we wanted to do this is uh, anxiety, depression is at an all time high nowadays. So any little dent we can make and the impact of journaling could reduce stress, anxiety, depression by up to 35%. Um, so it was really important to us to do this kind of passion project. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pass you over to Derek, and he's going to describe some of the technologies we used in the project. Uh, in order to develop the back end for our website, we used Python, Flask, and SQL Alchemy. For our front end, we used Bootstrap, HTML, CSS, uh, React, and Zen Quotes API. Scott will now demo our website. Hello, everybody. I'm Scott, and we're going to do a run through. Um, this is our landing page. Whoops. What just happened? Desktops again? No. Sorry, everybody. Done this like 50 times with no problems. And then I must have closed out. All right, well, Scott's getting that ready. Um, I just want to talk a little bit more about the project. Um, this, this, these issues are, um, have a real impact on me, especially in this high, this high tech age where everyone's online, everyone looking at everybody else's lives, um, always comparing themselves to other people. So having a little space on the internet where you can get away from all that and really just connect with yourself instead of comparing yourself to others was very, very important to us. Um, uh, once I, when I first brought up this idea with uh, Scott and Derek, um, they were really excited and we want to get started on it right away. But this was still during our beginning months. Um, I think that was back in like November when we first started talking about it. So we were nowhere near ready to start building this, but it was something that was always in the back of our minds um so as we move forward we always had this idea this vision we wanted to do as we progressed in the cohort and learn new things so whenever we learned how to do databases or use hooks in react it was always like well how can we use this to apply in the website we want to build at the end um and like i said earlier my team members were some of the best i could ask for um really understanding um intelligent knew when to ask questions um uh derek here is uh one of the best people gets there on time <laughs> which is incredibly important um i'm gonna pass the mic over to him because i know he would probably like to say a few words as well another advantage to our project is that it is completely online you don't have to go out and buy a journal or i know i, I go through journals i run through journals and this one, you have a, basically an infinite number of pages to always, you know, write down whatever you're feeling, whenever you're feeling it. Um, and we do plan on 
implementing a mobile version as well. So then you can do it on the go from your phone. So there's, there's a lot of room for growth, but we um, have worked really hard on this and we're very proud of what we did. Okay, so we're gonna get back to our demo now. Scott, I don't think we can't hear you if you're talking. All right. So this is Serenity Scribe. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Awesome. So this is our landing page. And uh, we have a login. We got Mr. Flintstone already signed up. And we go to our uh, journaling here where we have a, um, you can enter what you want to say for the for the day. Um, I want to say a link here, um, give myself a link and then a mood. And maybe we'll be sad because we have so many happies in here. So we'll submit that and then it shows up over here and it shows um, what we wanted to express and then what mood we were in. Um, at the time and then we go over to the profile we have mr flintstone's profile here but if we want to change that we can change it no problem so we'll put wilma in there and we'll save the changes and it saves successfully. And we, we see that we've made our uh, changes and then um, we'll log out and build a new, a new user. So we're gonna have Scott register so he can start being a uh, start scribing and here we are we have a blank slate I haven't made any entries uh, yet um and then uh, Derek's going, going to tell us about things um, that we're going to add later, but I'll make a few comments here on um, we started off simple because we want people to get a really uh, good feel for um, just doing the journaling and doing the basic things and, and their mood. And then we're going to add uh, other things later, and those will probably uh, be coming from here. Um, there's quite a few things that Derek will share, but I wanted to comment on the analytics that there's so many things that we can add to that. We've got some affirmations going, but we're gonna um, continue to grow that. But, but there's so many things in analytics can just be like how many days in a row, how long it's been, how you felt. You know, you can go uh, so in depth with that. Um, if someone's been, you know, um, a not happy uh, mood for a long time, we can cue it to offer uh, places that they can go to to talk to people. And, and um, yeah, there's so much that we uh, can, uh, can add to this in the future and we have plans to do. So we're excited about that. So let me turn it over to Derek. As Scott and I previously mentioned, we do plan on having um, 
on obviously implementing more features into our website. The first is to um, make it make it more optimized for a mobile uh, web uh, a mobile um, app. We also plan on adding an embedded music player, a, a color changing background like you can uh, customize your own background, and as Scott previously mentioned, an analytics page. We did face a few quite a few challenges along uh, our journey. One of the challenges we faced was um, was converting the journal entry data into a raw format to store it into the database, and also storing and fetching the profile pictures into the database was also a challenge that we had to face. We we want to express our gratitude to our friends and family for their support as we embarked on this journey. Additionally, we want to thank Shane and Valerie for their support and mentorship, and we also would like to thank Four Geeks for uh, allowing us to go on this journey. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, then, I, before you guys go, I have some oh, questions. Yes. Any Can questions? You my questions so they can hear. Yes, I can. Awesome. So, when are you guys launching? Oh, that's when an excellent get, question. When are we going to get this product? What do you think? <laughs> November twenty-five. November twenty-five. Um, the question was, when are we? When do we plan on launching our product? Ah, uh, I don't know. We can do it over the weekend, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this weekend. Yeah, where, where are you going to host it? Where are you going to host it? Um, we already. Yep. Oh, uh, hosting. Oh, when are we going to? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I'm sure your your teacher wants to ask you some questions. So you want to open it up to, to questions? Yes. Anyone have any questions? Okay. I I got a question. Go for it. Um. So for your um, database models, I'm assuming you guys wrote them to like handle um, those journal entries and save that information somewhere. Uh, I was just kind of wondering, maybe you could, if maybe you could elaborate on what those models are actually storing in the back end a little, other than just maybe like the journal entry. Yeah, so we have um, we don't have too many models. It's not too bogged down. We have a, a, a user model, um, a, a journal entry model, and a moots model. It's very simple. Um, the user the journal entries get tagged with the user ID, um, and that's how it keeps track of everything. We want to keep things very nice and simple and clean um, to not bog down the code. Keep things fast. Um, as you saw when Scott was going to previous journal entries, they like loaded in a snap, so. Okay, yeah, cool, thanks. Have you already elaborated on your IT? I have not. You should, because oh. it, it's so obvious that you are in IT because you're caring about the speed of your application. Of course you're gonna care about that. You're worried about, you know, things related yeah. to this. Well, um, as one of our audience members pointed out, um, I have been in IT for over 11 years. So little things like speed of the website uh, are things I care about when when designing it from the ground up, uh, which is why we wanted to simplify the models at all costs. <laughs> uh, does anyone else have any questions? Okay. Cool. Thank well, thank you guys. Very well done. Round of applause. Okay, now for our next group, we have Prep Pal with Rochelle, Chazney, and Carlos. Take it away. Alrighty, let me know when you guys can see my screen. Hello? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. We can see it. Okay, perfect. <coughs> Alrighty, hello everyone. Welcome to PrepPal, your new kitchen companion. The solution for anyone who loves food, but not the hassle that comes with planning and tracking meals. What is PrepPal? PrepPal is an innovative app designed to enhance your cooking experience. It generates personalized recipes based on your dietary preferences and tracks nutritional intake. 
With AI-generated dish images and adaptive learning, PrepPal makes meal planning visually appealing and tailored to your tastes. Uh, problems. Uh, difficulty in finding recipes that cater to a specific dietary preferences. For example, if you're carnivore, vegetarian, or doing any kind of diets. Challenges in tracking and managing nutritional intakes like proteins, carbs, and calories. And overwhelming and all the time consuming, that is meal planning. We found a solution for this and is a personalized recipe generation according to uh, dietary preferences. Precise nutritional tracking for a better dietary management, AI generated pictures that uh, show you uh, the understanding of the dishes, and adaptive learning to refine suggestions based on the user preferences, simplifying the meal planning. Hey. So, why this project exactly? We asked actually wanted to highlight the use of an AI model within our product since we personally think that it's a good skill set to have right now. Um, and so for AI adoption in workplace, 56% of workers use AI, indicating a growing comfort with AI tools in daily tasks, such as meal prepping and recipe making. And then for market growth, um, the US market growth is projected to reach 594 billion by 2032, highlighting a strong economic impact. And then for the global market, it is expected to reach 267 billion by 2027, um, basically showing that there's an opportunity for AI integrated applications. And then for employee performance, 81% of employees feel AI enhances their job performance, suge suggesting a positive reception for AI tools. And then for conversational AR AI market, it is expected to hit 14 billion, reflecting the rising importance of AI and in user interaction. And for job creation, AI is expected to result in a net increase of 12 million jobs by 2025, indicating a need for AI savvy professionals. Hey, my name is Carlos Hernandez, and before 4Geeks, I didn't have any prior uh, experience in the tech world and development. I wanted to make my experience, and today I'm honored to present you guys our project called PrepPal with the, team, with the great team of Chesney Sison and Rochelle Aguilar. Hey everyone, I'm Rochelle. Before getting into tech, I owned a skincare studio and worked in finance and business development. I got into tech because it's everywhere from our phones to our gaming devices, right down to our cars. I started off initially my journey learning UX UI design. And in this field, we use tools like Figma. So pretty early on, I realized that having coding knowledge is a skill set that would make my experience using those tools easier. So it's how I ended up here at 4Geeks. I used my background in project management and design to help make our app not only work well, but to look good too. And working on PrepPal felt like being part of a real development team, which has been great for preparing me for a future where I can combine my design skills with my newfound coding knowledge. Hi, I'm Shazne. Before going on this tech boot camp, I was an e-commerce, um, I was an operations manager for an e-commerce company. Um, after that, I joined my first bootcamp, which concentrates on backend development using Java and MySQL. Currently, I'm a data analyst for a hedge fund. Um, using my backend experience, we were able to work more seamlessly during the development of the database and the backend. Having used OpenAI API and other projects um, gave me the experience to develop the functions related to it. This project has been really rewarding as I get to see in real time how my code behaves. Um, the way I intended to, which we don't really get to experience that much um, when we're doing backend development. In the PrepPal project, I tackled several key features to enhance the user's experience. First, I built the login page for secure user access. Next, the sign-up page to welcome new users into our app. Then I designed the user dashboard where users manage their preferences and see their culinary journey unfold. 
I also created the recipe and preference forms to personalize the entire experience, allowing users to fine tune their recipe results. And then lastly, I mapped out the wireframes for these sections, ensuring a user-friendly design. Simple and intuitive, that was the goal for each step of the way. For the prep project, I styled the pages with CSS to make them look great and work well on any device. I designed a clean and intuitive navbar for easy navigation. Uh, the homepage, uh, homepage was crafted to be uh, welcoming and uh, to guide users right into the apps, setting the stage for a great cooking experience. In this project, um, I blend all the backend function and logic, um, created the models, developed the MySQL database, made the routes for the functions interacting with the database and the third party APIs. Creating PrepPal was a journey that began with the foundation of any robust application, its underlying structure. Here's how we laid the groundwork for a seamless and intuitive user experience. So when conceptualizing um, the project, we started with a database schema using um, MySQL, um, and we made UML diagrams to map out the architect architecture of PrepPal. So what you're looking at right now is the UML diagram that I've made using Mermaid Code, um, basically showcasing the relationship that we have for um, each table. It shows the reference tables, the joint tables, et cetera, et cetera. Before a single line of code was written, we sketched out the wireframes for the entire user interface. This was key to visualizing how our users would interact with our application. So at the user's first touch point, we've got HTML, CSS, and React. HTML lays out the structure while CSS brings in the style, making our app not just usable, but also visually appealing. Then there's React, a powerful JavaScript library that makes our user interface responsive and interactive, ensuring a smooth culinary journey for every user. And so for behind the scenes, PrepPal runs on on a combination of OpenAI API and Spinacular API orchestrated through Python. These APIs bring you smart recipe suggestions and nutritional is, um, insights. Basically, OpenAI generates the recipe and its knowledge is some supplemented by Spinacular API. We store your preferences in our extensive recipe database using MySQL, an efficient and reliable database management system all of these technologies are woven together with Flask, um, which allowed us to deliver a fast, um, scalable, and secure backend, which basically responds to every query in real time. So, so now it's time to bring this elements to life. Let's walk through the actual experience of using our app. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen real quick. Okay, let me know if you can see my screen. Okay, awesome. So this one right here is our homepage. In our nav bar, we have a toggle for either light mode or dark mode. So we have our light mode, um, but for now, I'll go ahead and put it on dark mode. And then we have a login or register button right there. And then this button right here is the recipe generation button. This specific button is for um, basically just for non-users. Um, this one is just the basic recipe generator. So once you're a logged in user, the recipe generator will be a lot more specific um, to what your preferences are. And then once you scroll down, basically all of the info of how PrepPal works all the info um, about what our app is all about, our mission and vision. Um, and then all the way down here, we're also highlighting um, the features. And then we have a call to action to sign up in case after reading all that info, they're like, wow, sounds like a great app. Let me go ahead and sign up. And so basically it just um, goes to a register page. 
And so um, we'll go ahead and do um, and generate a recipe, generate a basic recipe. So um, I'll go ahead and do vegan. So just so you could see that it really is um, a vegan recipe, um, healthy. And then we'll do Chinese um, if you can. Okay, because I was having that problem. Um, but so now we're gonna generate the recipe. So um, the thing is, as we said a while ago, queries are being sent in real time. So the recipe is being generated right now in real time. Everything related to the recipe from the image to the title, summary, ingredients, uh, macros. And so we also added this loading page um, just for the users to see. Okay, and so now we have our recipe. So this one is the image that was generated. We have the title, the summary, ingredients, directions. We have our macros right here. And so the only thing is, so these recipes that are, that are being generated, they're not being saved in the database. The only way they're being saved in the database is if you, you log in or register to save. So you need to be a user to save um, the recipes. So I'll go ahead and log in. And so once you log in, if you log in from that page, it takes you back to the past recipe in case you want to save that specific recipe you just generated. And so once you click on save recipe, that's when it's put into the database and put in your save tab. And then after, do, after saving the recipe, you have the option to save to a menu or create a new menu. So I'll go ahead and save to menu, which I already have here post rave replenishments, post boot camp celebration, you know, just some few ones right there. So um, we'll, that, we'll go ahead and press save. And so if you actually go to the user dashboard now, it'll be right there. Um, so this is the user dashboard. Our user dashboard has four tabs. This is our main create um, tab. So this re recipe generator generates recipe based on preferences saved. So these preferences are also saved in the database. It's specific to a user. And then this one right here, it's only when you want a recipe on the fly. Like let's say, oh, tonight um, I have a party for five people. Um, one of them has um, a nut allergy, a dairy allergy. So that's when you can go ahead and be more specific with it. These um, information is not being stored in the database. It's basically just in the store. Um, and so this one's our menus. As you can see, we have this one is, is empty. That's why there's no recipe. And then this is, if you remember, this is the recipe we just generated. And then we can also create a new menu. Um, let's say Friday, um, dinner, fun day. Fun recipes for Friday. <laughs> I know, creative. And then it'll be, um, sorry, let me just go ahead. Oh, there we go. And then it'll be right there. And so now I'm gonna show you how um, it'll be as if you were a user, if you wanna generate an actual more specific recipe. So let's go ahead and do a carnivore because this boot camp, this sleepless nights, I need iron. I need, I, I need some replenishments. Um, for serving size, I'll go ahead and just do two. Um, and then of course you can be more specific with the macros and whatnot. Um, if you want to do like a hundred, like if you're doing two um, serving size, you could do like a hundred grams, 50 grams per serving size, etc. And then for cuisines, I'll go ahead and just do um, Indian, and I want it to be um, low carb. And now we'll go ahead and generate. Um, and as I said a while ago, so um, right now the loading page is not showing, but um, as I said a while ago, the recipe is being generated right now. Um, in the future, with more testing, with more debugging, we could, of course, make the prompt a lot better and basically even use other models um, so um, so that you could do offline and other things like that. Um, and of course, in terms of scalability, um, a model from Hugging Face or maybe even Llama is, could be um, considered. 
So this one right here is the recipe that was generated from there. Remember, it was a carnivore diet, so it gave me lamb chops. And then again, the directions. And again, you could save it to a recipe. So I'll go ahead and save it to menu. A while ago, um, with punishment and Friday dinner fun day was um, empty. And so once you go back, we'll be right there. So thank you so much for um, viewing our site or app with us. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I really enjoy making that. It's always a really fun. Um, I'm passionate about making food. I cook every day and make finding new recipes is always such, so hard. Wow, that was fantastic. Very well done. The, it, it, it's funny, if you if you were to show somebody this application, you wouldn't guess that it was a team of three over a few weeks. The sophistication of this application is really incredible. Uh, I have a question. What what models did you guys use from OpenAI? We used GPT-4 um, and we used Dolly, um, Dolly 3. Basically, we used chat dot completion um, for um, the functions. Awesome. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Well, uh, anybody else have any other questions? All right. Well, round of applause. Very well done. Next up, we have Trabador with Brody, Matthew, and Jose. Hey, how's everybody doing? It's definitely a hard act to follow, <laughs> a tough act to follow, I should say. Um, okay, give me one sec here. Okay, so hi, good evening, everybody. My name is Matthew. Um, my team members are Brody and Jose, and our project is called Trabajador.com. Uh, so just a quick glance of what we're gonna be talking about, our experience, what Trabajador.com is, uh, a peek behind the technology, um, how our site works, our challenges, and the next features. Um, so, as I said, my name is Matthew. I go by Mateo. My team members, Jose, he goes by Frankie and Brody. So, I come from a marketing nonprofit background. Uh, for me, I've always worked with websites. I've always uh, helped to uh, develop them, but more so on a client basis. So, um, had a hand in that process, but this definitely was quite the experience uh, learning how to code and sort of from a different um, point of view, right? Um, Jose Brody. Uh, hey, I'm uh, Brody. I am a co owner of Dubox Deep Clean. A little bit about myself, I guess. Uh, I have a passion for skateboarding, even though I don't have the time for it anymore. Um, when I originally enrolled at at uh, Four Geeks Academy, mainly to just pursue a better work-life balance, I'm tired of being out there working with my hands constantly. Uh, I'd like to sit down and rest. <laughs> Uh, Jose. My name is Jose. I go by Frankie. My, my previous work experience was like YouTube content creation and like video editing, Photoshop, things of that nature. And my experience at Four Geeks, I had a really good experience. The teachers were great. The mentors were great. And yeah, um, it's it's pretty amazing how fast able to actually learn things uh, for geeks is really able to show us that and yeah cool 
Okay, so what is Trabajador.com? So think of it sort of like as Fiverr. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Fiverr is a website where uh, freelancers can go onto it, sign up, register, and basically advertise their services, right? So everything from photography to editing to video creation, uh, as well as coding, uh, you can go on there, sign up, register, offer your services. So Trabajador.com takes that similar concept, takes the... Um, freelancer elements, uh, but it's specifically for coding vendors, right? Uh, the concept, uh, well, the name is trabajador, which means worker in Spanish. Um, specifically, we're, you know, trying to, the, the idea behind that is like, you know, hard worker, right? Trabajador, somebody that's hard worker, hardworking. Um, what it does when somebody goes onto our site, is you can sort of see the services that we offer here. Um, our goal with Trabajador.com is to offer an opportunity to hire somebody in your vicinity. Uh, one of the issues that uh, Fiverr.com offers is that you're sort of left to whatever they want to present to you, right? Let's say you search up a concept related to website development, right? Uh, they'll show you all their top rated vendors and people in sorts, but these vendors can be from all across the country, can be from all across the world. So what we do is that we give you the opportunity to filter by location in order to hire local talent. So that's one of the benefits of Trabajador.com. And as you can see, these are the different services that we offer as well. Okay, so Jose. Okay, so some of the technology we used when we were coding. For the back end, we used Python, SQL, Alchemy, and Flask. For the front end, we used HTML and CSS, React and Bootstrap. And for the API, we used Stripe. One of the reasons we decided to go with Stripe was because of its popularity. Around like 2.8 million websites use Stripe, so we figured that learning how to integrate it and use it would benefit, it, benefit us in the future. Okay. <laughs> okay, so when we were designing uh, the site, we really wanted to prioritize a, uh, a clean and professional structure. And because we were promoting professionals on the site, we wanted the site to also look professional and we dedicated a significant effort into maintaining a consistent brand identity. And we just wanted to ensure that every interaction on our platform reflects our commitment to quality and professionalism. Okay. So, we be doing the... Uh... Okay, so this is Trabajador.com. Um, you know, like I said, I mentioned earlier, I come from a marketing background. So for me, you know, trying to get that messaging and the look, it's important. Um, you'll see we're, we're still, you know, trying to figure out a few things here and there. But for the most part, we try to stay consistent with our branding. Um, you know, we try to add some cool features to just the styling and all that. Um, here one one thing that we're you know sort of like uh really proud of is that we integrated these cards that allow you to um see some of you know fake vendors of course but this is what it would look like on the real end once uh vendors sign up and uh advertise their services so um you know we added some historical figures here who uh have contributed to uh, the programming industry. So, you know, you're going to be able to hire a few of them, uh, services we offer. And of course, just our, um, footer there, uh, as for our services page here, we have filters. You can filter by different things like that. Uh, and of course we plan to add some more filters. We also are able to filter by top rated. Uh, so if you scroll down, you'll see, 
um, one thing that you can do is that you can add these to the cart and then it'll populate in here, which Jose will show you in a bit. You can also see their details here. We added a modal to showcase the individual and kind of give a little bit of a detail. Right now is this like a historical bio of these individuals, but you can, you know, as we develop the site some more, we'll definitely add some more information related to like the pricing, the, um, uh, the different services and all those things as well that they offer. So you can see we have here as well. Uh, so Jose, all. Or Brody, I mean. You're all oh, right. Sorry about that. Um, now I am here to show you guys the register and um, sign up page or the register and login page. Uh, just use my name. Right, and then it should redirect me. I'll go ahead and save it. And this is where it gets messy. Um, we're under construction here on the profile page. In the future, uh, I would like to display the order history, tracking numbers. Um, all that is down here at the bottom. But right now, um, this is what we've got. And we've got the About Us page here. Uh, just empower your vision. Got just a few, few things here. And I'd like to apologize. I am terrible at presentations. Um, okay. Jose, do you want to go next? Okay, so now I'm going to go through the checkout process. As you guys can see in our cart, we have Gladys West, with the price per hour. And we can go ahead and change the price per hour. And I'll just fill this out real fast. <laughs> okay, then I'll press pay. And it'll process and then get this message. The vendor will send you a message as soon as they're able to discuss further details about your order. And you could just continue shopping from here. And the next page I'm going to show is the review page. Just some fake reviews that we do in here. And yeah. OK. Let me share the presentation. Okay, Brody. All right, I'm unmuted. Nope. All right, let me pull this up on my end too. All right, so a few of the challenges, um, just ensuring a smooth flow of information between the front end and the back end that can be quite yeah, challenging. Um, but look, did you? What was that? Oh, never mind. Um, now, You're, luckily, we had. We can't hear you. You can't hear me. What? The? We can hear you, Brody. No, we oh. Can't hear you. Okay. Uh, right. I'll just start over. Um, so, ensuring uh, a smooth information flow between the front and back end can, can be here 
challenging. Can uh, everybody else here, Brody? Yep. Um, but luckily, we had the mentors available. Oh, shoot. Sorry about that. Luckily, we had the mentors available to um, help us straighten a few things out. Uh, as far as documentation goes, it's very important. Uh, but for me, I've got to repetitively read it over and over and over again and over again a few more times to really get it to stick. Um, see here and I I guess for the future of uh, our website we would like to implement um, a more seamless checkout feature um, additional pages and functionality um, we would like to optimize the site for mobile use and uh, curate some content Uh, yeah, no, that's that's about it for me. Um, I would like to express my gratitude to the Four Geeks Academy and their staff. Uh, they've been incredible with supporting us. Uh, I mean, that's that's about it. Again, terrible at being put on the spot. Sorry, guys. Yep, thank you. We seem to be having like an issue over here, technical difficulties with the audio um, at the office, but you can use my computer if you want. Yeah. Right. Any questions? Yeah, I got one. I got it. I can go back. I think, I think it's fine now. All right, so uh, you skip, you skip the okay. Can everybody hear me? Sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah we can now. It was, our, it was our, out for a little bit. Yeah, our speaker here on campus just just cut out randomly. So, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. So the question I had for you is: Are you going to make this a real product? Are you going to move forward with it, or? Yeah, I've spoken with um, both uh, Jose and Brody about like continuing this project uh, post graduation. It's something that we're uh, that we want to continue, add it to our uh, portfolio, and grow it eventually. Awesome. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. All right, cool, awesome. man. Thank you. Either way, before you before you take off, I think there might be more questions. Yeah, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So these people that you hire, right, they're real people. Yep. Like, yeah, that's mean, the so intention. Do they have a separate kind of register, or are they just going to register like normally if they're at their place? Yeah, so they're going to have a separate registration page. So that's one of the future goals as well, to add a button there for people to register uh, as that. vendors and also as users. So to separate those two. So that's something that we have to work on the back end to make sure that for the future that it's uh it's uh set up. So awesome. All right, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you it. Yeah, appreciate your loaner. So, <laughs> awesome. All right. So next up we have art seekers with Erica, Jose, Wesley, and Aleska Aleska. Excuse me. All right, one second. You got this, girl. We believe in you. <laughs> All right, Alaska, I think you're up. Okay. Yep, just one second. Okay. Good evening, everyone. We're thrilled to embark on an unparalleled journey with you today. A journey where every step leads to discovery and every discovery opens a door to a world more colorful and dynamic than the last. Welcome to Art Seekers, where your adventure in art begins here. Imagine, 
unlocking the door not just to any gallery, but to a playground bursting with the treasures of human creativity, a place where art isn't just observed, it's experienced, lived, and shared. Here, every click is a new discovery, every art artwork tells a tale, and every moment is an invitation to see the world through an, a kaleidoscope of perspectives. You can go next, please. Okay, this is the table of contents. This is what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna meet the team, why we choose our seekers, like using the site, the technologies we use, the preview of the page, the updates to come, and what we think. Okay, this is our team, featuring Erica Scott, Jose Dominguez, and my person, Aleska. Thrives on creativity, strategic thinking, and a sure lack of coding experience that never damps our spirits. With our diverse cultural and employment backgrounds, we tackle challenges with innovation and a touch of humor. We're learning on the go, supported by teamwork, for gigs mentors, and the occasional helpful YouTube tutorial. Now, Jose's gonna go next. All right, guys. Good evening, my name is Jose Dominguez, and today I'm excited to discuss why we chose our seekers as our digital ambassador to the world of art. Firstly, did you know that around 1.2 billion people visit museums each year? Buildings aren't just museums that house artifacts, they're vibrant hubs of knowledge and culture that draw crowds seeking connection with our past, understanding our present, and inspiration for our future. At Art Seekers, we tap into this universal lore, and we make art accessible to people around the world transcending geographical barriers. In the time when travel may not be possible for everyone, our platform opens virtual doors for global art treasures, making every corner of the world accessible with just a click. Moreover, museums are custodians of human history and culture. They're educational powerhouses where each exhibit holds a wealth of knowledge. For instance, the Louvre in Museum, which is home to over 380,000 objects, received 9.6 million visitors in one year alone before the digital shift, making it one of the most visited museums in the world. But Art Seekers is more than a gateway to art. It's a bridge to understanding diverse cultures, and it's crucial to recognize that art and culture significantly impact economic growth and social cohesion. Studies show that engaging with art can improve empathy, tolerance, and critical thinking skills. Did you know that the British Museum's collection alone encompasses over 2 million years of human history and welcomes over 6 million visitors each year? or that the Metropolitan Museum of Art, whose API we use in New York City, with its 2 million works of art, is one of the world's most iconic art repositories globally. With Art Seekers, every user gets to join a global art party, learning about other cultures in a way that's interactive, engaging, and continuously evolving. We're not just a platform. We're the sum of countless stories, perspectives, and inspirations from across the ages and around the globe. In choosing Art Seekers, you choose to unlock the collective history of mankind, to wander through the annals of time, and to explore richness of our diverse human tapestry, all from the comfort of your home. Join us as we embark on this journey of discovery, connection, and celebration of art. So really, really quick, here we have a couple like screenshots of what we have to offer. Uh, to the left, you're going to see uh, essentially that we're going to be a card-based um, sort of website. And you're going to see up top, you're going to see the two examples, the one of the statue as well as the, the Asian tapestry. Uh, that essentially it's going to be simple. All you have is an image of the actual art piece. And then below, you're going to have a title. And you're going to have the button, which is the favorites button, which is going to be the key to really begin curating your own personal experience here on Art Seekers. Below that, if you really want to delve deep into sort of the intricacies of each art piece, you're going to have the card. It's going to show, as of right now, the title, time period that it's presented in, as well as the creator, as well as that, that image as well. Uh, and then to the right, you're going to see um, our actual profile or the profile that you would create, which is really going to be your sort of diving off point where you're going to be able to sort of share and you're going to be able to create your own personal art speakers profile, something that's really created for yourself. And then next page, Erica. But before we get into all the art stuff, just very quickly, I want to talk about the technologies used. So let's talk about the powerhouse technologies that make Art Seekers a seamless and dynamic platform. Starting with the backbone of our backend, obviously, Python. Um, this versatile language is not just about compatibility, it's about flexibility and power. 
Python plays well with others, running on JSON and C Python, which means we can leverage in the future the performance optimization of the Java virtual machine for unbeatable efficiency. Its industrial applications are vast, including the sophisticated realms of machine learning and AI, where it powers technologies like ChatGPT. It's no surprise that giants like Google are on the hunt for Python experts. This language isn't just for coding, it's a language for innovation. And let's talk really quickly about data analysis. With Python's libraries like NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib, we're not just building an app, we're setting the stage for informed decision-making and increased efficiency down the road, as well as expanding our team. But now shifting to the front end, React. React stands at the forefront. But why React? Because it offers ease of use, versatility, and efficiency. React allows us to create a dynamic user interface for art seekers that's both responsive and engaging. It's the bridge between the user and the art world, ensuring a smooth interaction and a rich experience. And then, of course, the classics. We have HTML, CSS, and Bootstrap, which frame the aesthetics of our platform, providing a polished, accessible, video. and mobile-friendly interface. Art Seekers isn't just functional, it's beautifully designed. And the piece de resistance of our front end is the integration with the Metropolitan Museum of Art Collection API which means our users get direct access to a treasure trove of art from one of the most prestigious collections in the world. Together, these technologies come together and don't just build a web app, they create an art exploration ecosystem that's robust, reliable, and ready to scale. That's the Art Seekers promise. All right, Erica, take it away. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, before we step uh, behind the curtain of Art Seekers with a live tour, let's take a moment to glance at a snapshot of our app in motion. This GIF is a teaser, a glimpse into the elegant user experience you can expect after signing up. Notice the fluidity of navigation, the crisp visuals, and the intuitive layout, all crafted to bring the world of art into your daily life. Now, prepare to dive deeper as we transition from this vibrant illustration to the full rich experience of Art Seekers in motion. I'm about to switch over to our live application where the art isn't just viewed, it's felt. Let's embark on this journey together. All right, welcome art enthusiasts and digital pioneers to the realm where art, where create, I'm sorry, where creativity meets technology. Welcome to Art Seekers. Let's embark on a virtual odyssey, bringing the marvels of the world's art directly to your fingertips. Our landing page is The Gateway, a canvas that unveils the essence of art seekers. Here, our mission breathes life into pixels to transcend physical boundaries and deliver the splendor of museums to your personal space. Dive into our features, crafted with the art connoisseur in mind. View exhibits as if you were strolling through the halls of history, save masterpieces that resonate with your spirit to your profile and imbibe the narratives behind each creation. Before signing in, Indulge in the home, museums, and contact us pages. Our museums page is a showcase of the creme de la creme, starting with the illustrious Metropolitan Museum of Art. A click transports you to a quick facts about the Met, igniting curiosity for what's to come. You can also see that new museums will be added in the near future. Now let's step into the members realm. Post login, you're greeted with a suite of new pages, the heart of art seekers. Your profile echoes your preferences, awaiting the treasures that you'll collect. The exhibits page is an invitation to wander through our museum's endless corridors, each piece a whisper from the past, beckoning you to connect. A click, and you're presented with a tapestry woven of the artist's name, culture, region, and the era it was birthed in. Navigate next to the departments page a directory of diverse artistic domains within the museums. Here, you're the cur curator, the explorer charting your journey through the, through the departments, favoriting as you go in each selection a brushstroke of your taste. Return to your profile and revel in a gallery personalized by you, for you, a mosaic of your favorites. Transitioning back to our presentation, Let's peek into the future, a vision of art seekers that further dissolves the barriers between art and aficionado. As art seekers continues to evolve, our canvas is expanding with vibrant new features designed to deepen your immersion in the world of art. 
Let me paint a picture of what's on the horizon. Firstly, our gallery will grow, introducing a broader spectrum of museums to our website. From the hidden gems and cobblestone alleys to the grand institutions that crown our cities, more portals of culture await your exploration. Next, we're bringing interactivity to the forefront with the ability to rate individual pieces. Whether a painting stirs your soul or a sculpture captivates your senses, your ratings will help us tailor a more personal museum journey for you. Sharing your thoughts will also go beyond a star rating. Leave reviews for exhibits, departments, and museums, contributing to a community of art lovers and helping others discover the narratives that resonate most deeply. And imagine this, art seekers will suggest which museums to visit in person, drawing from your virtual interactions. Your digital footprints across galleries and your engagement with art will shape your recommended art journey. For those who love a little competition, we'll also be introducing a ranking system for exhibits based on positive interactions. Watch your favorite pieces climb the ranks as more art seekers share your enthusiasm. Personalization will extend to your profile and the curation of your favorite pieces. Create a digital gallery that's as unique as your taste in art, arranging your favorites in a layout that tells your own artistic story. Sorry for my dog. We understand the anticipation that comes with waiting for new exhibits. As an email subscription service, Luna. An email subscription service will keep you informed about fresh editions, ensuring you're always up to date with the latest from Art Seekers. The future of Art Seekers is a mosaic of these updates, each tile placed with the intent of creating the ultimate virtual art exploration experience. Thank you for being a part of the journey, and we can't wait to unveil these new features for all of our art enthusiasts. And before we conclude, our hearts burn with gratitude for four geeks, Shane, our mentors, Andres, Valerie, and Christian, Without your help, we would not be able, we would not have been able to complete this project. We hope that Art Seekers resonates with your artistic soul as much as it does ours, and we eagerly anticipate your thoughts and feedback. Thank you for journeying with us through the intersection of art and innovation. Bravo, bravo, very well done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Can, can everybody hear me fine? Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. They were hailing me inside here and saying I was muted. I just wanted to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And for our next group, we have, oh my God, I'm so hungry. Sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> forgive me. I, I don't. You guys Yo, know. same. <laughs> <laughs> we have Burger Bite yeah. with, with Casey, Hugh, and Nathan. Take it away. Or take All a right. bite. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Let me pull up the screen here. I'll be the only one presenting today for my group. Uh, my teammates had work conflicts. Um, so let me get the presentation up. All right. My name is Hugh Alex Anderson. My teammates were Casey Cox and Nathan Duenas. Um, our web app is BurgerBite. We create customized hamburgers ready for purchase. Um, so a little bit about my background. Uh, I had, I've had no coding experience prior to uh, Four Geeks, so it's been quite a journey uh, throughout the course here. Um, and I think that goes for all of our team. Uh, Casey and Nathan both had um, very little full stack web development experience. Uh, we had to learn how to overcome our um, our uh, weak points to get this uh, project working. Uh, so we really, we used this project um, mostly as a vehicle for us to apply the knowledge uh, that we gained during the Four Geeks course. And we used it to uh, push ourselves beyond our coding comfort zones, meaning that uh, we really wanted to delve into some of the technologies and understand why we're using them. And when we go through the website, I'm hoping that I can highlight some of those sufficiently. Um, and um, yeah, and we have a lot of thanks to Four Geeks uh, because they they helped us become proficient, self sufficient uh, developers. Um, feel like we're ready to contribute to almost any development team uh, after this boot camp. So um, moving on, 
our little burger bite pitch is that there are billions of hamburgers being consumed annually worldwide. Uh, we've noticed there was a massive appetite waiting uh, to be fulfilled. We thought our platform would provide a seamless and convenient way for burger enthusiasts to like customize and order their perfect burger from the comfort of their homes. Uh, there's my burger army. Um, let me walk you through a little flow chart for using the site. So up here in the left corner, we're starting with number one, the user will create an account and sign in. Uh, the user, go to number two, is then welcomed and will navigate to the menu. Right here where this hamburger icon is, the user will create and add burgers to the shopping cart. And when you get to the shopping cart, user will confirm the cart. Everything is in there and good to go. Uh, you can proceed to checkout after that. Checkout will handle the payment. Um, that's where you'll add your payment information as well. Uh, after the payment has been handled, the user will be redirected back to the welcoming page, which doubles as an account profile page. Um, this page here has a lot of uh, ability to be um, added to uh, for new features. Um, I'll show you when we get to the website. And then the user will be able to log out of the session. Um, inner workings of our website. Uh, we use Python, SQL Alchemy, and Flask for the back end. And then for the front end, we used HTML, CSS, React, Bootstrap. And then for our APIs that we integrated with, we used Open Weather Map and Stripe. Uh, just quick note on SQL Alchemy. It was great for working with our, our uh, database models. <laughs> I mean, it really made a compact... Uh, back end for us. Um, and then the front end bootstrap was great for our forms and components, like making those real quick. But there were some parts in this project where we kind of wanted to learn uh, CSS properties in depth a little bit. So we avoided using bootstrap for some components and made custom components um, just to see you know, why bootstrap such a big deal. <laughs> it saves a lot of time. All right. So I wanted to talk about the, one of the APIs we use real quick before we get into the website. Um, so we use the Stripe API. It's a payment processing um, API. And it, it's really nice. Like there's PayPal and a whole bunch of other ones. What Stripe does really well is use uh, already made like checkout pages that they provide. Um, and they have a lot of components already made. Uh, with Stripe, what we wanted to do was make everything custom. So we made the custom checkout forms, the custom payment methods and, and all that. So here I've divided this page into three parts. We have the payment intent. That's up here where we create a payment, uh, a payment of intent. And then um, on this checkout page, we'll also create a payment method. And these payment intent and payment method are the two things that the user uh, needs to actually get this payment to go through. And what's and why I'm highlighting this is because this webhook here that Stripe uh, will send back uh, can actually track a ton of events and information that um, you can call on uh, later on in your project. And it's pretty sweet. Uh, I'll show you when we get there. So at our website, let me uh, switch over to the website. Um, here. OK, so here's our landing page, the Welcome to Burger Bites site. A lot of bold colors. We've got our walking burger. We've got some featured uh, burger carousel down here. Again, a bootstrap component, really easy to make from bootstrap, and it's cool. Uh, got our little about us. And then up here in our nav bar, we have log in and sign up and a option to get back to BurgerBite home. Uh, the nav bar is set up so that when you log in, when the user logs in, they get access to their pages. So everything is being authenticated. Um, so for the sign up works, but I want to 
save time and we'll just go straight to login. I'll log in with a user that I've already made. This is good old Kathy at mail. So when the user logs in, you're going to land on our welcoming page where the user will be able to create a burger. Uh, this page also provides a lot of um, flexibility for uh, future features we were thinking about and create like creating um other menu options here so maybe not just burgers but like burritos milkshakes pizza whatever you can think of um so what we'll do here is we'll go to create burger and it brings you to the menu page so on this page you're greeted with our digital robot here who follows you around with his eyes um and you'll see that um you have ingredients down here in this box i just wanted to highlight with these ingredients here uh they are actually entered in the back end which is kind of cool because it would give um restaurant owners or managers or admins the ability to enter in ingredients that they want to add for hamburgers so if they have like a special ingredient special beef or something you can add it um, real easy in the back end. Uh, and when you start uh, selecting ingredients, they will build in the robot's mouth. So here, I'll just add a whole bunch of ingredients. Um, and then we have some tabs on the robot as well. I'll just go through it. This is our one of our APIs right here on the right side. Actually look up the weather in Hamburg, Germany. It's a clear sky right now with temperature 43 degrees. Um, and then on the other side, on this tab, uh, we've got our shopping cart and you can go back to your account profile page. So I'll just hit the shopping cart page to go look at the hamburger we just made. And there should be hamburgers in here already. So burger 413, this is the one that we just made. Uh, 409 and all these ones were in here previously. Um, let's say we just want to add one more hamburger. You can go back to the menu. You can hit the plus button and it creates a new burger. You can select on ingredients again. It'll build the hamburger. And this is all being built on a Z index. So it looks like it's stacking on top of each other. Uh, it's a cool feature. Um, uh, let's say I don't want tomatoes. You can just clear the ingredients. Oh, well, go to, yeah, there, ingredients are cleared. There we go. And then you can add it. So we'll go back to the shopping cart. Uh, we'll just get, remove some of these older burgers. Don't want those. We'll go to the checkout page. So now when we hit this checkout page, this is when uh, Stripe is getting called. We're going to actually create a, uh, a payment, uh, an intent to pay by clicking on this checkout button. Uh, that's one half of the information that we need to complete the checkout. So when the user comes here, we get our checkout order summary. You can confirm that you have these burgers in your shopping cart for this amount, confirm the total, the total should be here. If everything looks good, yeah, you can just go back to the shopping cart page, make sure we have our two burgers. Yep, back to checkout, enter in my credit card information. And then pay, now we've just hit we've just created a uh, payment method and it was processing that's when the webhook came back with the payment success information that i'm calling to get us to this page right here uh, for payment successful and the user will just hit close bring you back to the welcome uh, page account profile page and then the user can log out or go back and order some more fake hamburgers um so some of the challenge that challenges that we had to overcome uh, i think all the groups had to deal with this to some degree um it's kind of learning how to mold the front end to match the full capability of the back end that we wrote um 
the back end is, is really flexible and it's just a matter of how much time do you have to add the functionality you want into this project. So again, like I do have plans for the project in the future, would love to work on it. Um, but again, this, this is a challenge because it, it takes time to understand, um, uh, get to get used to, uh, how to mold that front end to the back end. So same thing here, getting acclimated with sending and receiving information from third-party APIs. Uh, you know, we're able to do it, but every API has got its own little nuance. So it does take time uh, to learn that. And um, it will affect how much functionality you can add, especially if you're working on in deadlines, uh, we noticed. So for future projects, these are all things that I'm gonna definitely take into account. Uh, and you know, all time management related. All right, so some of the next features that we'd like to add, uh, we want, we're thinking about maybe adding a wallet to the profile page. That way you can store credits and easily order food that way. Um, we were thinking maybe uh, more menu items or an option to uh, add vendors, maybe even restaurants, keep it like a Grubhub type deal. Uh, another uh, feature we'd like to add was um, adding your address uh, for delivery. Um, some additional functionality for admins and managers, like um, tracking how much ingredients you're using, how long does it take to cook those ingredients, uh, tracking receipts and order history and all that. And then uh, we were also thinking maybe too, we could uh, take this into a whole totally different turn go maybe more of an entertainment route we were thinking of like a burger crafting game where you get like uh rare ingredients and you make rare hamburgers and then you go and trade them on the market and get even more rare hamburgers or even make like a uh, a community board where people just make custom hamburgers and post them um so yeah those those were for our features and um I had a ton of fun making this project. It was super cool. I had no coding experience coming into this. And thanks to uh, Shane and Valerie, you guys uh, helped out so much and really showed me a lot of cool tech that I can use to like write code, uh, test code, run code, debug code. Yeah, it's been great. And um, I've met with most of the mentors at this point too, at least once. Um, and yeah, the they all, all been great uh, keeping us on track and moving forward. Um, so yeah, highly recommend Four Geeks, a uh, fun project. Thanks guys. Bravo, bravo, very well done. Does anybody have questions for Burger Bite? I love saying that, I just wanna say that right now. <laughs> Any questions, any questions? All right, well, congratulations. You did the presentation all by yourself and you carried the team, man. Well done. Well done. Yeah, we got there. <laughs> Thanks. Indeed, indeed. All right, for our final presentation, we have Flight Scheduler with Andrew, Jethro, and Nicholas. Okay, can you see the PowerPoint? Yep. <clears throat> okay, go ahead, Jeff. Okay. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jet Wong, and I, I have the pleasure to be part of this group to present to you uh, the flight schedule. Uh, the group is the group is is formed for three people: Andrew Morales, Jethro, and Nicholas. We are from different backgrounds, and, and we became friends during during the project time, during the class time, and, and uh, during the debugging time also. <laughs> Uh, 
Well, we supposed to present to you tonight uh, um, our timing for gigs, the project itself, and also the challenges we faced and the features for the future. As you know, uh, our, for our experience in for gigs, we we know we. We all know that coding is uh, challenging, is a little bit challenging for us. Uh, but uh, we, thanks to our mentors, our classmates, uh, we embrace it with excitement and patience. For gigs help us to build our knowledge from the beginning, like uh, uh, the simplest as HTML until the back end process. And we hope uh, to go f to move forward and to be able to to launch our website. Um, so we, what is the flight set schedule? What it is exactly? Uh, Nicholas will talk to you about it uh, in a few minutes. Okay. I'm trying to handle. Can you want to show your screen again? Because uh, I can't see it on my end for some reason. Uh, can everybody else see it? Uh, yeah, I can see it. Um, okay, Rochelle, can I don't see it. Okay, let me let me exit out. Okay, can you see it now? Yes. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so Floyd's schedule. Uh, our project was essentially made to solve uh, a personal issue that I had um, at my unit and with scheduling flights. So we have sort of a person that um, decides uh, not really who gets to fly, but uh, they sort of plan the process once the pilots have openings and stuff like that. So this would essentially give a that person a little bit more ease when they're deciding who or who goes first or on what days and stuff like that. So um, it, it it removes the need for the planner to organize that that flight schedule throughout each day of the month, and it just streamlines the process. Um, another feature that we added that which we didn't have before was uh, uh, real-time weather forecasting, and that allows the pilots to know and the scheduler to know um, what kind of weather they can expect and whether they can fly or not. So how it works, uh, on the back end, we have Python, SQL, Alchemy, and Flask. And on the front end, we have HTML, React, and Bootstrap. So we brought together all this. Uh, to make the website that we have now, which I'm going to showcase now. Uh, give me a second. Yes. So my computer's acting a little slow right now. So this is our website that so we have. This is our homepage, essentially. Allows you to see forecasts and stuff like that. Um, you can sign up, which I'm going to make a quick uh, profile. Uh, can we have, I think I already used this. Okay, so we can go to our profile page. This allows us to update our profile, and we would like to have uh, reservations that are current. This is new, so it doesn't have anything. So we go back to the home page. We can see sort of like Miami. It'll show us a forecast of the weather, and we can go to other places like Detroit, and it changes. And then when we want to schedule our flight, we go here. 
and we could add in a flight. Normally what would go here would be like the person flying. So I could put my name. And then starting uh, today at sort of like 8.30, and then the flight could end um, today around 11, for example, and then we add event. And it'll show up on the day. And that's essentially what we have so far. So going back to the PowerPoint. Um, and this is what is it sharing? OK, there we go. So this was the, the next slide would be a look at our site. So I have some uh, pictures of it. And then future implementations, which Andrew's going to cover. So as you guys saw, um, some of our site is missing a couple of things. Some of the things we'd like to add was um, for more UX UI design, a modal that would pop up. That way it kind of takes the declutters uh, screen a little bit and makes it a little bit easier to put like specific times and dates for any of the pilots or whoever else would like to fly. Also for our, as Nick showed, in our profile page, we have a, you know, current reservation status. Uh, we'd like to have a list of, you know, all the reservations that any particular user has available and is ready for the future. We'd also like to add a, like an edit and delete portion to it as well, because as we know, things pop up all the time and certain flights you're not able to make and X, Y, and Z, sometimes you need to switch it with another pilot. Whatever the case is, we like to add that feature as well. And one of the other things we also like to add is for the weather, we only have a list of certain cities right now. What we'd like to add and from that later is where you just type in whatever city you're going to. So say like Los Angeles or um, Austin, Texas, or anything like that. It'll show you in real time instead of like a predetermined list already. Also, we'd like for the ability for the flights to be downloaded as an Excel spreadsheet for any of the captains or any other lieutenant or anyone that needs that information to kind of just be important somewhere else. And then to also add a little more customization to the profile, be able to have, you know, profile picture and AOC in the rank as well. Do you want to the next slide, Nick? So some of the challenges we faced, personally for me, uh, the main problem was working on the back end and um, as everyone has kind of talked on it previously, kind of just merging the, the back with the front and kind of get them to work harmoniously. So that was a, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> that was definitely a challenge. And also just trying to create a good user experience so whoever uses the site isn't kind of lost and confused on how, how it works. And I'll let everyone else talk about their points. So I can go. So I had uh, some scheduling issues and that caused me to sort of front load a lot of the stuff like the calendar page. And um, it just took a toll on my learning, which I could have spent more. I wish I could have spent a little more time on it. And then when I was coding, um, because I didn't have a lot of time, I kept mixing up syntaxes and it just caused a lot of, you know, just caused a headache. So. Um, that was kind of the two main problems I had. Yeah. <clears throat> For me, it was it was uh, the syntax and also the structure, the different structure of, of the website and, uh, and and the connection with the back with the back end. So we'd like to personally thank everyone at 4 Geeks. You guys have been incredible beyond any expectation I could have ever hoped to have had or imagined. And we'd specifically like to thank Shane and Valerie, because you guys are awesome and you guys are incredible teachers and mentors. And thanks for being our part-time uh, therapist as well when it was getting rough. Thanks, guys. Very well done. Very well done. Any questions? All right. Well, that wraps up this presentation. All groups did phenomenally well. I'm very proud of everybody.
I'm so proud of you guys. Make sure you guys connect with each other, okay, on the Slack. Don't, don't, you know, like, just let this be a thing that existed in the past. Stay connected. Reach out. Remember what Tamante said at the start of this uh, this presentation today, Shane. I'm sure you want to say some things to your class. Oh, absolutely. Every single one of you guys did a spectacular job. You are all stuck with a having to build something from scratch. Like you had seen all the various bits and pieces of this, all of the various uh, uh, steps that it takes to do this. But you had to go and and then actually figure out how to successfully complete a, a a full project from beginning to end and that's that's a challenge that's it's it's not easy and you guys you guys all did stu superbly uh i was stuck between superbly and stupendously there so pardon the, yeah but yeah now you guys you guys did great it's been a blast Honestly, yeah. Thanks so much, you guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, Shane. Honestly, we couldn't have done it without you. PT58 definitely adores you. <laughs> yeah. And Andres. And Andres and Valerie, we love you guys too. <laughs> yes. Okay. Would anybody would anybody like to add anything before we end up here? Having multiple projects that were uh, food based was honestly kind of torture. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, see, <laughs> see uh, I'm I'm a good guy, so I'm not going to mention that we had pizza here at the in person location. So <laughs> a little jealous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, very well done, everybody. I'm very proud of you all. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> Awesome. We'll be reaching Thank out you. to you guys via the Slack channel very soon with uh, incoming information. All right. Take care. Have a good night, and everybody, get, get some rest. <laughs>